Uh, this is Amal Ushnan. I am expert at the International Project Department. I will be your host for today's session. Uh, the lecture will be on tobacco dependence and COVID-19. It will be presented by our dear speaker, uh, Dr. Hassan Volkan Kara. And I would like to welcome and thank Dr. Volkan for joining and for sharing uh, his precious time with us today. Before starting, allow me just to introduce our uh, distinguished speaker, uh, Dr. Volkan Karam. He graduated from Marmara University Medical Faculty. He completed thoracic surgery specialization at CDKL Chest Diseases Pulmonology Hospital. He worked as a lecturer at Marmara University Medical Faculty, Department of Thoracic Surgery. He took part as a guest lecturer in closed system cancer surgery, video assisted surgery and cancer cell culture laboratory studies for a year at the Department of Thoracic Surgery at Duke University in North Carolina, Carolina USA. He still works at Istanbul University Faculty of Surgical Medicine and continues his PhD program in medical education uh, he deals with minimal invasive surgical models in lung cancer, adult education program, and measuring and evaluating behavioral change, tobacco and tobacco products training for electronic cigarettes. Dear participants, uh, our session will last for one hour. 14 minutes will be for our speaker and 15 minutes for question answer session. Please kindly mute your microphones, open your camera if you can, and please add your country uh, next to your name. Uh, without further ado, I would like to give uh, the floor to Dr. Volkan Kala. Sir, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your nice invitation and for a very nice presentation about me and introduction. Uh, I'll be starting my slideshow. Let me give me a second. Coming. Okay, I think everyone can um, see that. Sorry, actually, yes. we cannot uh, see the face of our uh, uh, Dr. Volkan. Could you, Dr. Volkan, open your camera if possible? It's it's open. It's, it's open. open. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now it's open. You can share your screen. Okay. We can see Mr. Volkan and now we're yes. waiting the presentation. Okay. Yes. If you can just share the uh, your yep. screen again. There we go. Uh-huh. Okay. It started. Okay. Very well. Now we can see the presentation. Perfect. Okay. Uh it's my privilege uh, to be here today. Uh, I thank the organization, the both organization, uh, for their kind invitation and to give me an opportunity to give my uh, experience in the uh, last few months and including my previous experience about tobacco. And thank you again for your very nice introduction about me. So today's topic will be about COVID-19 and tobacco, in fact, smoking. Yeah. So the learning objectives for this very prestigious uh, uh, community will be the COVID-19 effects on the body, how COVID-19 affects on the smoker's health, uh, what did the pandemic uh, time taught us about our health, the tobacco industry's attitudes during the pandemic which is going on, and I'll be mentioning about some activities of the Green Crescent activities uh, during this pandemic. So in fact, when you look it closer, it's all about this. So this, this will not be a medical presentation. So the level of uh, medical knowledge will be lower to make it more understandable. So we can discuss it uh, more easily and talk and discuss about it. Basically, in, uh, at the end of December uh, 2019, there had been some atypical cases of some new infection. And first, they were not uh, required as a new uh, disease, but as the number of the patients increased and 
as I said, seem to be atypical. There had been an effort to understand what's going on there. So what happened is the scientific guys, the scientists isolated a new virus. In fact, a known virus, but a new derivative, a new uh, a mutated virus, which is called coronavirus. And the disease it is called in 2019 is said to be COVID-19. This is a this is a known virus because in the starting from the 2000s there had been few pandemics in local areas, in the Middle East area and in some small areas causing severe acute respiratory syndrome, which is more about lungs. That's the reason why I'm giving this topic. So the COVID-19 has some very well known symptoms, which are more related to respiratory. Uh, Tract system. We we have fever, we have cough, shortness of breath, sometimes difficulties in breathing, muscle ache, difficulties in swelling, and neural and digestion symptoms. But more we are focusing is respiratory system because this virus causes some serious infection in some patients, which is called pneumonia, which is a very serious lung in lung infection, and also for some patients we have insufficiency of the respiratory function. Even some renal kidney problems may, may occur due to this virus. And unfortunately, the rate of the infected patients in this uh, virus, uh, the rate of that from this infection is higher than the previous known viral diseases. That's the reason why World Health Organization uh, since there is no known treatment, no vaccine, and the transmission is so fast, World Health Organization, who uh, approved a pandemic worldwide, warning the all communities that this is a serious health situation. And unfortunately, the disease spread worldwide and in a very fast way and causing uh, disease in all communities where people go and come. And now what in the position of where we are about COVID-19, we are trying to isolate the virus. We are trying to isolate the patients who have been infected by the virus because unfortunately we don't have, we still don't have a definitive treatment and even a vaccine. So what we can do is we can isolate the patients. We can try to treat them in the best way that we know and we can try to avoid spreading of the disease. That's the reason why health workers had been working very fast in the last uh, nearly four months, because the disease is transmitted so fast and it's generally due to the respiratory tract. And we are trying to inform patients, inform the communities, inform the people that spreading through the uh, evaporation and the respiratory uh, tract is still so important and the best uh, treatment way for the disease for the virus is to not to be infected unfortunately so when we come today after this very short uh, brief information about the enemy that the whole world is fighting for the last four months for maybe six months the covid-19 is related with the respiratory system and related with our lung. And we know that smoking is primarily affecting our respiratory system and our lungs. Well, I have been giving lectures about the harms of smoking for 10 years. Not only a scientific guy who knows the disease, moreover, I see patients who lost their health due to uh, due to smoking. I'm a lung surgeon, I'm a thoracic surgeon, and my most of my work is related with the lung cancer. So the terms that I'll be explaining to you and definitely has been seen several times during my medical practice. About uh, smoking, we know that starting from our immune system, going through all the bodies, our cardiovascular system, lung system, uh, related with diabetes mellitus, hypertension. So there is nothing, there is no disease which is not related with uh, smoking. We have already known this and we have been promoting health 
in Turkey, in the Green Crescent, in World War, saying that smoking is harmful for your health. Please get away from smoking and be healthy. Because we know that if you smoke, you are more uh, susceptible to some diseases which can infect your lungs. If you continue smoking, viruses, bacteria, and other microorganisms, which you cannot see, but can be very harmful for your health. We had this information, we had this medical data before the start of COVID. And after the COVID pandemic, we have been, we start realizing that uh, most of the patients infected with this disease have serious lung infection. So this is not a medical lecture, but I'm sure that most of the uh, privilege uh, uh, attending here can have seen such uh, computerized tomography and think that, hey, this is not looking healthy. So we can easily understand that this virus is infecting our lungs. But how does it start? It starts from our upper respiratory system. Related with smoking, these viruses enter the body through our nose or mouth. That's the reason why when we are testing if a patient has a disease or virus or not, we are taking samples from the first and well-known parts of the body to say that he or she has a virus or not. And after that, after entering the body, the virus tries to find a bridge, find a door, find a way to enter the body to make us sick. So that's where smoking starts. If you smoke, the pathways that this virus can enter your body and make you sick, because it's for sure that virus does not make everyone sick. There are some groups which are more susceptible to the disease. And unfortunately, smokers are at the top. So what happens is if you take the virus and if you are susceptible to the virus, or if you have many open doors that virus can enter to your body, you can be infected. So if you smoke, and if, or if you wait, electronic cigarettes is unfortunately, Dr. Abdullah mentioned a thing which is a little bit uh, uh, risky for us, saying that the national health system in UK is promoting uh, electronic cigarettes, which is not uh, scientifically true, because cigarette smoking, electronic smokes, electronic cigarette smoking are both unhealthy and dangerous for your life. If you smoke and wait, the immune system of, of your body cannot work properly, cannot uh, defend your body against any kind of illnesses, including the virus. The entrance points of the virus for the smokers are more empty, more empty places, so it can go into your bloodstream and make you sick easily. If you are smoking, the autonic uh, defending system of the body cannot work properly. In respiratory system, the cilia system, which is known as some small friends for us, that's clearing our lungs. If you smoke, these, these small friends cannot work for you, cannot empty the uh, inside of your lungs. So if you have a smoking history or if you're actively smoking, due to these vision, reasons, you are potentially a better candidate for a one who is not smoking. So it starts uh, in a negative pattern for the smokers to be infected by COVID-19. I'll be supporting my presentation with some very well approved published papers, which means data from some patients have been analyzed by scientific guys, science, uh, uh, medical doctors and so, and we are reaching to a result according to that, uh, that, that, uh, that point. So if you smoke, either if you're a man or female, doesn't matter, you are more attractive to, uh, to the virus. So that's the starting point. The first thing is you are more susceptible to be infected. I repeat again, there are some asymptomatic, which means you have the disease, 
but you don't have any symptoms. You walk around as normal people. That's the reason why we are promoting isolation for everyone. So if you are smoker, you have high risk to be infected. If you are a smoker and if you are infected, it's more probable that you will be hospitalized, which means you will be having the disease in a more severe way, more dangerous way. And for the ones who are hospitalized, the risk of that, unfortunately, in the intensive care unit is much higher for the ones who are small. So you are bitten in at least three ways just about a uh, respiratory system. There have been some, uh, we have some numbers. We can mention about some numbers. Is the first place for the virus is China. The highest number of patients, or the highest number of medical data is coming from China. So it says that this is a big data, like more than a thousand people, thousand patients, it's 2.4 times higher for a smoke to be, to be going into an intensive care unit, which means you are really ill, you are really bad position. If you are going with uh, a smoking history, which means I showed in the beginning, if you smoke, if you had smoked previously in your previous life, I mean, 10 years, 20 years, you have started this corona pandemic, unfortunately, in a weak way, which means if you have hypertension, if you have diabetes, if you have other respiratory tract illnesses related with your previous smoking, you are much more uh, susceptible to be infected. So we also have the numbers that patients having uh, underlying risky conditions that I have just mentioned, even they are not smoking at the moment, previously smoked, they may be highly susceptible for COVID-19 infection. So what we should be knowing that smoking can lead, leave some uh, uh, continuous defect on your body. There's also another study and which consistently having like 12 other scientific papers that 2.25 times higher risk for COVID-19 outcomes in the worst way. So as you can see, the numbers are always against the ones who are smoking at the moment of the pandemic or previously smoke. Unfortunately, the guys who have been previously smoked and continue smoking are in the highest risk. There can be such a question, we have heard about smoking, that's fine, but unfortunately, the worldwide, the, the tobacco industry has been promoting other tobacco products, e-cigarettes, some other heated tobacco products. World Health Organization, including this previous uh, risk, have mentioned that by using nargile, shisha, hokka, whatever it's called all around the world, or electronic cigarettes, since they can be used by, by multiple people, by physical contact of more than one people, can also transmit the disease from one to each other. So we have been faced to a new transmission method. About nargile, we have been promoting that if you use nargile with the pipeline in front of the uh, structure by touching the lips for other people, other infectious diseases like tuberculosis, some other bacterial diseases may be transmitted. And now in this list, we are adding coronavirus as well. As cigarettes, uh, I would like to pay attention uh, for this very uh, hopeful the future uh, of the world about electronic cigarettes because unfortunately electronic cigarettes is trying to be promoted on purpose for the future of uh, conventional smoking. The promotion is 
uh, depending on saying that it's less harmful, uh, it's harmless, it helps quit conventionally ordinary smoking, and it's not, uh, it doesn't harm your body. So there are some arguments, and unfortunately during this COVID pandemic, I'll show you some pictures at the end of my presentation, use this argument. But the reality is this, electronic cigarettes is not, uh, is not innocent. They are aerosol, they are chemical things. It's not wa wa water. So if you take the aerosol, these chemical things into your lungs, as I have showed about smoking, the system, the immune system, the cilia system in your lungs is diminished, is not working. So it makes you susceptible to the coronavirus as well. In addition to that, electronic cigarettes have been medically shown that it can destroy your body, it can destroy your lungs directly, it can burn your lungs. We have, we have seen patients before this COVID-19 pandemic using electronic cigarettes and their lungs are damaged by the use of electronic uh, chemicals because they contain tetrahydrocannabinol, which is an addictive material, and also they put some flowering material, which are all uh, chemical and they can cause damage to your lung tissue and they can increased inflammation, uh, Abdullah has also mentioned about it. And these are all making us susceptible to the infection. What happened during the pandemic lockdown? We were forced, unfortunately, the health workers were asked to go to work, but the, the community were asked to stay at home. So staying at home might have caused for some citizens, the risk, the, the increase of the anxiety, which has increased or influenced the speed of smoking, which is which was very dangerous. But in addition, there is then also another term we are so much concerned, which is passive smoking, which means you don't smoke, but if someone smoked around you, you are exposed to that harmful thing, and it can also damage your health, damage your lung. In addition to that, on the behavioral side, as the families started to spend more time in the house together due to lockdown or the, 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 the rules of isolation, the children had more chance to see their parents smoking, which is very dangerous for the future because the, the companies, the tobacco companies are aiming our children, our youth for the future because they, have, they need some new customers. So psychologically and socially, we had this unfortunate exposure. So our aim, our power, our uh, efforts were to motivate people on that side that COVID-19 pandemic is an excellent time to quit smoking because many smokers, until they get sick, would not be considering about the risk about smoking. But now everyone around says that, hey, we have an enemy. It's a virus. We cannot see that. And everybody says that it is. it makes you vulnerable. It makes you more susceptible to this disease. Smoking makes you susceptible to this disease. So for the guys, the smoker ones, who are clever enough, it's an excellent time and urgently uh, leaving that smoking habit. Because if you stop smoking within 20 minutes, even in the first half an hour, your heart rate and blood pressure becomes nearly normal. In the next day, the carbon monoxide level, which is not, uh, which is, uh, uh, which makes you unhealthy, decreases nearly half. In the next two weeks, your circulation improves and you feel more healthy. And in, after one month, remember these guys, these, excuse me, 
sorry. Okay. Oops. Sorry about it. Uh, and in the in the two months time. Yeah. So in the two months time, these friends in our lungs will be working healthy and much more happy serving for your health. But tobacco industry will not let the smokers to leave this addiction line, the addiction circle. So during the pandemic, they have used all the arguments, all the possible promoting materials to make people don't forget about smoking, don't forget us, don't forget, uh, don't forget spending money on us. So they have been using the social media because it will be discussed. I mean, technology addiction, social media addiction. So people started using the social media much more because we are locked down. We left our responsibilities. We have plenty of time. I think on my side, that's a golden thing to be used. But most people try to use uh, spend time on the social media. So the the the, uh, the, the companies even use Nurses Day to promote their uh, products. So this is an unfortunately uh, some uh, tobacco industry induced. Uh, social media influencer and they try to promote you saying that hey you are locked down okay no problem but we can do everything for you we can bring your cigarettes to your homes or you if you use our this smoking uh, thing it will be helpful for you to be a rare pulmonologist a lung disease doctor so they are lying so we have to be careful we should not be forgetting the truth smoking and vaping makes you unhealthy and the tobacco industry is aiming you the children the youth for the future customers to take your money to take your health and to make them richer what did yeshil i mean the green crescent do during this pandemic the guys from uh, the attendings from turkey know about it but i can i think that that would be influencing our uh, inspiring uh, our colleagues worldwide. Uh, Green Crescent had, a, uh, had some centers, physically centers for addiction, to treat people about addiction. Since during the lockdown, these centers were closed. So they were converted to, to call centers and they start giving uh, physical, I mean, I mean, psychological support about uh, tobacco addiction in addition to other ones. And there have been thousands of calls and many people had a chance to learn the truth. We had some social media campaigns saying that coronavirus is more uh, liking the lungs, the respiratory tract, the nargile, the shisha, the hokka is also dangerous and makes you susceptible to. There have been some Instagram uh, line, uh, live streams there had been some YouTube small videos, short videos, and we try to uh, inform our community as much as possible during this time. So if you come to the end, smoking and vaping for the coronavirus is helping you, I mean, is uh, making you more susceptible. So if you continue smoking and vaping, your infection rate about your respiratory system, including the other systems, will be higher. You are in much more danger. But if you leave it, or if you even don't need them anytime, I hope this would be the scenario. You will be healthy, you will be away from the coronavirus, and you will be uh, living a long, healthy life. During this pandemic, all around the world, there had been thousands of health workers and other professions, including my honorary faculty, Jera Pasha, Turkey, and all around the world, 
they we work heroically uh, to uh, and we risk our lives and to save lives. So we thank all the health caregivers, frontline uh, warriors, and we show our respect to the fallen ones. And I give my best wishes to the audience for their listening. And I'll be so happy to answer any questions. And thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Hojam, for your presentation. It was very fruitful and productive. Uh, you mentioned a very significant uh, point, especially how uh, to raise awareness during this time of pandemic. Uh, I believe that despite the negative impact of COVID-19 and pandemics in general, it is the right time and the ideal time to present a culture of uh, healthcare. Thank you so much again. Uh, now I would like to open the floor for the question. We have uh, 15 minutes for question answer session because we have another lecture. Uh, so I would like to take the privilege of the moderator. I will ask the first question. Uh, what, what is electronic cigarette, uh, heated tobacco and hookah? Is it harmful to health? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's an awesome question. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, very, this is an important thing I try to emphasize in the presentation, but it's fine to repeat it. Yeah. Uh, these are new generation products produced for tobacco industry because due to activities in the last 30 years, now all the community knows that smoking is harmful for the health. So the Tobacco companies try to make a new product saying that, hey, okay, smoking is health is not helpful. I mean, it's not healthy, but these products are new, brand new, and they are not healthy. I mean, they are not uh, harmful for your body as the previous one, but the heated tobacco is tobacco. So whatever you take inside your lungs is the same with the conventional, uh, the burned out cigarettes. About electronic cigarettes, it's chemically produced, a vaping system. There is no tobacco in it, but it's a liquid and it turns to a vapor. And they put to, to, to give that pleasure of smoking, they put hundreds of chemical ingredients. We know some of them, but we don't know most of them. What we know is, what we know for sure is, electronic cigarette is also so harmful for your body. About Hokkan Shisha, it's again tobacco, it's burned. The, the question about is people who support that say that it's going through a pipeline within the water and leaves all toxic materials, which is not true. In fact, Hokka is 50 times more unhealthy, 50 times uh, uh, harmful for your body than normal cigarettes. So these are all in the same group. These are all produced from the same guys. These are all harmful for our body. Thank you, Hoda, for the clarification. Now I would like to open the floor for our participants. And the first question will be from Mr. Musa Al Hassan please, Kroma. Please allow me to ask a question, please. Musa, can I, you hear me? I'm hearing you. Thank you very yeah. much for the opportunity. Uh, my question is if tobacco and other substances are so much uh, bad to the human herd, what, uh, what do we think the government can do in order to? To reduce the production of those uh, substances. Uh, if I again, to... please. Yeah. If tobacco and mm -hmm. other substances are harmful to the human herd, mm -hmm. what do we think the government can do in order to reduce the production of tobacco? Mm -hmm. oh, so, okay. what if the I... government can do? Yeah, what the government? Do. That's an excellent question. Thank you. That means that you have listened to us very carefully, Musa. Thank you so much. Um, for the conventional tobacco, unfortunately, it had been more than 100 years that they had been on the field. 
so there are farmers there are people working on the on the industry so unfortunately maybe that would be the best solution to take this all uh, out our agenda but we cannot do that but for the electronic cigarettes there had been government which had been abandoned so turkey is one of them i can proudly say that in turkey electronic cigarettes uh, marketing is legally prohibited i know that in some states of united states it's also prohibited uh, in India, I know that it's prohibited. You cannot sell legally. But about manufacturing a product, unfortunately, you cannot, uh, you cannot stop people manufacturing something uh, even if you know that it's harmful for the health. But the good thing is if you can increase the education level and awareness, if they cannot find people who they can sell this product, in the, maybe in the future, they will stop producing, manufacturing these products. That was an excellent question, Musa. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, second question from Musa Sawana from Gambia. Okay, another Musa. Welcome. Yes. Um, thank, thank you so much, Hujam. Um, um, I, I live in a country, I live in Turkey. So when it comes to smoking, I know very well that Turkish smoke cigarette. And fortunately, I'm also a teacher. So I, I tell my student to quit cigarette. But Hujam, what they tell me is that they're addicted to cigarette. And they ask me, and there's, there's a difficulty, and they're anxious and stressed. We know everybody stresses this time, Hojam. So is it really a, a good time to combine stress, anxiety, and quitting cigarette? They tell me that smoking cigarette and drinking chai is the best feeling. So I find it difficult to say anything. <laughs> that, that's, that, that's a good question. That's a tricky question. Uh, thank you so much. First, if you're... We, we are medical medical workers have the best aid about quitting cigarettes uh, from the teachers. So we need your support. Secondly, unfortunately, it's a material that called addiction. So someone, an addict, addicted guy, always have a reason to continue using the material. Says that it decreases my anxiety. It helps me feel better. Well. In a way, you can explain this. But on the other hand, it's something unhealthy. I mean, here it may make you feel better, but it will kill you. But smoking does it, it does it in time. So if you start the sentence from the say that, hey, this is an anxiety time. Uh, we should not be doing this radical movement this time. That, that person would not be quitting smoking. But on the other hand, as I mentioned in the presentation, if you are smoking, you are more susceptible to this enemy. If you continue smoking and if you have the disease, you may die. If you smoke it in, in between your family area, you can poison your children much more. You can cause them become infected and die. So I believe for the guys, who are delaying their quitting smoking, this is an excellent time to make them, to put the mirror on them saying that, hey, you said that you were, you were planning to stop smoking. This is the most ideal time. If you can't do it now, you will never do it easier in this time. Uh, thank you, Hujam. Uh, next is Raisa Suamanjari from Madagascar. Okay. Uh, Merhaba hocam. Merhaba. Thank you so much. <laughs> I really enjoyed your presentation. So my question concerned more about the passive consumers of uh, tobacco. So mentioned many times that people, uh, smokers are more susceptible to be contaminated by the virus, this COVID-19. So what about uh, passive consumers? How are the risk of those who are not smoking, but you know, uh, yeah. around people smokes. Like, how is it? Okay. Is it uh, that, that's a that's a very nice question uh, about uh, passive smoking, passive exposure to the smoke. I start with the behavioral unfortunate situation, which uh, the the children see their parents smoking because parents are our role models. So if your father, mother does something, it's hard for the children to say that, 
hey, it's wrong because if my father does this, it's fine. The second thing that you have mentioned, if you inhale a smoke, even if you do not hold the pipe or the electronic cigarette, if you inhale it, maybe not as the same higher rate with the smoker one, but the negative effects on your respiratory system will be occurring as well. Suppose that a guy, your parent, your wife, your husband, or your friend is smoking a package of cigarettes around you and you are exposing that during the day. I guarantee you one third of that cigarette is smoked by you. And if your uh, immune system, if your lungs are uh, susceptible to any, any disease, that passive smoking will increase the uh, speed of being uh, infected or being uh, diseased. There are some small children uh, coming to the doctor with asthma. And like 80% of those children have parents smoking because passive smoking is inducing asthma, the respiratory system. So maybe it's not the same rate as you are smoking, but if you have a susceptible immune system, if you are susceptible to some diseases, and if you are a passive smoker, the disease will come easier. Okay, Hojan. Uh, next question from Rida Agadi from Algeria. Okay, hi, Algeria. Hello. Hello, hi, Algeria. Uh, I'm Rida Agadi, I'm from Algeria. I'm doing energy policy at the Pan African University. Okay. Thank you, sir, for the entertaining presentation. Uh, since I'm doing uh, policy, I'm always uh, interested with uh, designing and formula, formulating uh, policies. So since we uh, know the impact of the tobacco and the smoking, why governments and leaders are allowing national and even international companies invest in this field, in their lands? <laughs> well, that's, that's, kind of, kind of, yes, that's, that's, kind of, that's uh, uh, respecting uh, the rights of the people or uh, some, I don't know. Thank yeah. you. Uh, to, to, to start in a good manner, I must say that I'm a medical guy. Uh, I'm not a politician, uh, but I hope from this very uh, uh, motivated community, there will be further politicians in their country. So please start how we can do it today. And I give you some clues. Uh, electronic cigarette is banned in some countries, including Turkey, India, in some states of United States. So it can be done, but it will not be easy because we are fighting or we are working with, or we are trying to um, find solution against a big uh, power, which is called tobacco industry. But to start, I mean, to, to dream about something is a good start and you are young, you will have, uh, I hope, long years. So try to make a project. So what we are trying to do is to increase the uh, susceptibility about this thing is a good way to start. So I hope in the next 20 years from some people from this nice community will be the leaders of their countries or world leaders. And they will remember this speech and said, yes, I have the power now and I'll do that. Thank you so much. Yeah, so. thank you. Excellent question. I mean, we have to dream about it. We have to think about it and we have to work about it. Exactly. Great. Uh, last question will be from uh, Adama Danfa from Gambia. We have this last four minutes. Okay. Hi, Gambia. Adama, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir, for the informative uh, session. It's really, really educative, and I've learned a lot from it. Um, my question is, I have a friend who works at the hospital, and uh, he smokes. So anytime I told him to stop smoking, it's not good for the health, he will tell me, okay, I work at the hospital. And then there are these Cuban doctors and foreign doctors from the West that normally, before they do surgery or they do any act of uh, 
medical works or ever, they normally smoke. Or sometimes he will even see some of them mix some of this. Like yesterday, he told me he saw one of the doctors. He mixed uh, uh, one of the, uh, I don't know what is in that particular cigarette. He mixed it with water and then drinks it. Then he went to the surgery room. So he told me like he always see the doctor doing this thing. So if smoking was bad, why would the doctors do that? And then they already know that smoking is not good for the health. So to him, I think that motivates him to keep smoking. So when people tell him to stop smoking, he does not uh, accept because we are not doctors. So we shouldn't give him advice when he's seeing doctors doing the same thing. Uh, that's a, so, I mean, th that's a heartbreaking uh, example and question on the, since I'm standing on the medical side. Uh, I'm sorry for the colleagues who smoke. Um, I hope we can meet you again to discuss the, the, the way of uh, smoking and tobacco starting from the 19th and the industrial behaviors and so forth. In 1950s, in United States, uh, like half of the uh, cigarette advertisement promoting uh, banners were consisted of medical doctors, showing a medical doctor holding a cigarette saying that your doctor smokes this one, you can smoke that. That's uh, unfortunately a fake uh, message. And after 1980s, they uh, stopped advertising about uh, smoking and cigarettes. First, there is no uh, evidence saying that smoking makes you in a better performance. Second, anyhow, any tobacco product definitely is harmful for your life. Third, a bad example is, a, is not an example. I'm sorry for the health workers there. I don't know what they, what, uh, what's in their mind, but first, they are harming their life. Second, they are giving a bad message to the community. So we teachers, Musa, uh, we yeah. medical doctors, I mean, we have responsibility to behave in the rights that we defend for our community. If we say smoking is harmful, we should not be smoking in front of any community member. Thank you so much, Adam. I think uh, we came to the end. Okay. It was a very insightful session. The lecture was wonderful with your valuable thoughts and experience. We are looking forward to having you in our future programs and events, inshallah. inshallah. Thank you inshallah. so much. I thank uh, the organization again uh, for creating such a reasonable and very high quality uh, education uh, media because the future of the education will be in this uh, concept. So that's an innovative, I really congratulate the organization, uh, committee, the organization, and I hope we can meet again. I'm really proud of this, like a hundred people who is joining us all around the world. The future is yours, a healthier future, a smokeless future will be by your help. Thank you so much. I am proud of each of you. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much for your kind input. Thank you. Uh, dear participants, thank you also for your participation. We will have another